Okay, so I'm gonna go over how to add cabinets and other components. Um, but I wanna take a minute to just kind of explain what exactly is a component within within Revit. Essentially a component is a set of families. Okay, we've talked a little bit about families in um, in previous lectures because we were in adding doors and windows and a door and a window is a family. So in other words, it's a pre-built, right? It's Rhino has pre-built a certain object or an item um, that we don't actually have to go in and build and 3D model individually, uh, in 3D model each individual kind of surface um, and element of that one object. It's already come, it's a door or a window already comes with, all of the um, the glass, the the framing, um, all of the the elements that make a window a window. So those things are called families. So it's a pre-made object. A component is they're kind of sets of families, right? So, for example, if I click on a window, this. 16 by 24 is a family. This 16 by 48 is a family. 16 by 72 is a family. The component, though, is a set of these families. So fixed with trim would be considered a component. Okay. Um, now, doors are, and windows are also components. Um, but doors and windows are so common and so are used. Um, and just really necessary um, to designing a building that Revit has made them their own individual icons, right? But there's so many other families and so many other components that exist in the component um, command. I like to think of the component command as like shopping at the Home Depot or going to Ikea. So it's essentially anything that you could pretty much purchase kind of off the shelf should be able to find at the very least a general um a general design of that item okay so that's what a component is so when we're talking about cabinets cabinets are considered a component but we're also going to be talking about water closets toilets sinks countertops and there's a whole um long list of different components that exist in 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 revit okay so we're going to start off with the cabinet component. Now, this 3D model that I've kind of generated, um, I've really just kind of created just to for for these tutorials and for these lectures without any real plan of it being a functional building. Um, so I'm going to have to I'm going to choose this kind of wall um, as my and pretend that this is going to be my kitchen cabinet area, right? Or my kitchen. So I'm going to create a, a line of cabinets um, along this edge here. And it's really just so that we can have a conversation about the corner. Because when cabinets and corners meet up, there's always um, something to consider. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to click on the actual icon. Okay. Don't click on the pull down. I mean, if you do, you can just hit place a component and that's the same icon as that. It'll be the same thing. Do not click on the model in place. We'll cover model in places um, later on. But I'm going to go ahead and just click on the icon. Okay. And it's going to be the same system, right? On the left-hand side, we go into the properties. We click down. And here, we could kind of scroll down, and you could see a list of components. Beds, chairs, countertops, dishwashers, recess lighting, dryers. Pendant lightings, refrigerators, ranges, even trees. Um, so you go down this list and you'll see there's a wide variety of things that we could choose from. And what we see here is just a small percentage of what actually exists inside Revit. Okay. But I'm going to start off at the top. We have base cabinets. Base cabinets are our kitchen cabinets. Okay. These cabinets are 36 inches, or well, no, they're two feet, 10 and a half inches in height. Um, and they're meant to have the kitchen um, countertop added to them. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see vanity cabinets. Okay, so these are the bathroom ones. 
Okay. Um, so you have to be really careful that you're paying attention to what it is that you are clicking on and making sure that that's the cabinet that you want. I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to select, so we have base cabinet corner unit. If you leave your cursor over the, um, the title, it kind of gives you an image of what it is you're looking at. Let's con I'm going to start with just a 30 inch base cabinet, double door and two drawers. So I'm going to click right there. Um, now there really isn't anything in the properties box um, that we have to kind of worry with. So I'm just going to move my cursor over here and you're going to see kind of a box in a hidden line. Okay. Now pay attention to, pay attention to where my cursor is in relationship to the box. You'll notice that it's a, it's at the top of that box. Right, it's not at the center, it's not at the bottom, it's at the top of that box. My that cursor is there. Um, the the placement um is there to reference the back side of the counter of the cabinet. Okay, so where my cursor is, that is, and whenever you add a cabinet, it's always going to add it or place the cursor on the back side of the cabinet. Okay. Now, I just said that we're going to add the cabinets along this wall. But if this is the back side where my cursor is, that means the opposite side is the front side. Well, then I'm going to want to rotate this. So I could rotate it this just by hitting the space bar on the keyboard. And you'll see that it'll rotate. So now it's exactly, it's facing the direction I want it to face. Now I'm going to come over here. Now I can, and it's really tricky here just because of the colors and um, the white lines of the floor are kind of uh, merging with the white lines of the cabinet. But I'm gonna want to move the cursor up to the drywall, right? Up to the gypsum board, okay? Now I can actually move it up to the countertop, I'm sorry, to the corner. So I'll go ahead and place it there. And of course I hit the wrong. <laughs> I didn't place it correctly. So let me grab it. I'll use the move tool. And just kind of move this back. Okay. So pretend this is where I originally had placed it. Um, cabinets are usually never butting up. The cabinet box itself is usually never butting up against a wall, okay? It's rarely ever done that way. The reason why is because drywalling or the gypsum board is never actually straight. Now, we all live in in, in a home, um, and so our, the walls look straight, right? And to most people, um, we never notice that the walls are not straight. But if you ever put a level up to a wall, um, specifically one of the larger levels that, you know, a six foot level, you'll notice that the wall itself is actually not straight. Um, there's always some sort of inclination. It's either inclining in or inclining out um, or it's warping and it's very minimal. It's very small, but, or sometimes it's not, um, but a cabinet is a straight surface. So even if the drywall or if the wall is inclining inward just an eighth or a quarter of an inch, well, you're still going to have uh, problems butting up the straight cabinet up against that wall. Okay. So what we end up doing is actually placing the cabinet about one inch away from the wall. Just like that, okay? Then we'll come in and we add a kind of a filler piece right inside here, which is called a scribe. Um, and that is going to, that's gonna kind of hide and we can cut that, you know, at the angle of the drywall and to, to fit along the, the wall. So typically we'll add a scribe right here along the side, okay? So when you place your cabinets, 
um, and there is a corner condition, move them about a, an inch away from um, from the wall. Okay. So here's my cabinet. Let's go. I'm going to cut a section. Actually, I'm going to take um, this section here. Come on. I'm just going to move this. And of course, it doesn't want to come with me. And I'll go ahead and flip it. And I'm just going to bring this down. So let's go double click. And there it is. Okay. There's my cabinet. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go ahead and add another cabinet. So I'll go to component. Let's go ahead and add the same one. But this time, just so that you could see, I'll hit the space bar and I'll put it backwards. I want you to see the difference between a cabinet that is facing correctly and the one that's facing backwards. Okay. Now, I will admit, in, with, the, um, with the shaded view, it is a little bit trickier to see because of the colors. If we turn the shaded view off, and it's just a black and white, we really see the difference, okay? This one is correct, that one is incorrect, okay? But we still get the swing uh, on the doors visible on the cabinet that is backwards. So if you're placing cabinets and you don't see all of this detail, then it means it's backwards. And so you're gonna have to go and flip it. So if we go to the first floor, okay? We can select it and we have these flip grips. So I can just flip that that way. Now that flipped it, but now we have to move it. So I just use the move tool and move it in place like that. So now let's go back to the section and there we have it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and add another cabinet, but this one we're going to place a sink. It's gonna be meant for a sink. So let's go back to component. Um, I'm going to go with a 39 inch. Okay. Now these cabinets do not already come with sinks installed. I'm just kind of anticipating that I'm, it is a kitchen cabinet. So, um, I'm going to want, I'm sorry, it is a kitchen. I'm going to want a larger sink and typically the larger sinks are about 36 inches. Um, they range in width, but a good kind of size sink is 30 about 36 inches, 33, um, 33 to 36 inches. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to add a cabinet that is 39 inches wide. And come over here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. I'll move my cursor. And it does snap. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you could see that, but it does snap up along the other, the previous um, cabinet. And so then I could go ahead and place it, but don't always trust it. Um, you always want to keep kind of going back and forth, making sure that it's looking correct and that you didn't accidentally have something that's overlapping. Okay. So we'll go right here. So now we have that. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and let's add another one. Let's go to component. Let's say, so right here, our options are essentially a base cabinet corner unit, a double door, and a single door, okay? But what if we want a different style? Well, we could always go to the load family and grab them. And in the load family, this is where we really get to see everything that exists, or we get to see all of the components that exist in in Revit. Okay. Now, load family shouldn't be new because this is where we went to grab the doors, or if we scroll all the way down, this is where also where we went to grab the windows. Okay. But um, but it's a matter of trying to find and locate where exactly are the um are the components. So for example, cabinets are not in a cabinet folder. They're in a casework folder. And so navigating this, just because of the terminology might be new or might be a little different, um, navigating 
this load family folder can be a little, I don't know, can just take a little bit more time. I did um, on Canvas, I do have a page that shows where to locate um, the most common um, component. So the water closet, the sinks, countertops, cabinets, things like that. Okay. But for a cabinet, we're going to go into the casework folder. So I'll double click. And here we have base cabinets. Here, this is where we're going to find countertops. We have shelving, we have tall cabinets, we have wall cabinets. I'm going to go to base cabinet. And we have all sorts of base cabinets. And then we have vanity cabinets. Okay, so that's what you want to make sure to keep an eye out for. Is that remember that the vanity cabinets, because of their height difference, um, these are for bathrooms. Base cabinets are taller, so they're for the kitchen. So let's say, um, this seems fun. Let's add this base cabinet combo zero one. I'll go ahead and hit open. Give it a minute, and then it loads in. So I click here. We have a 30, 36, 42, and 48. Let's go with a 36. And I'm going to hit the space bar. Oops. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I'll hit the space bar. And I'll go ahead and place it right there. OK, why did it not? The other ones came in black. This one didn't. So let's take a look. Let's just make sure it's correct. Ugh. That's annoying, isn't it? OK. So here's my theory. And this is just my theory based on working with components in, and Revit. And it's just my theory. I'm not sure how much truth there is to it. But because Revit provides so many components, my theory is that they have all sorts of people um, working on these and to working on these components to create these components. And my theory is that they don't they don't really communicate well with one another. Um, and there is no consistency because there are just like we saw here, there are components that have certain visual settings, while the same kind of family or the same type of component has different types of visual settings or different types of altogether, different types of heights and different types of setting, right? So um, here we added a cabinet and it's not the same. So it's a good thing we check and that's always what I, you know, that's why I keep saying, go cut a section and check just to make sure that it's all working correctly. I don't wanna, I wanna go inside here and I wanna see if we could edit the type. Now I was gonna show you guys how to um, edit the type anyway. So let's see if we can make a change to this. So I'm gonna click on edit type. And here we have the depth. So this is how deep it is. We have the height and we have the width. So I'm going to change this so that it matches the rest of my um, cabinets to two feet, 10, and one half of an inch. And then I'm also going to change the depth to two feet because two feet is the standard depth of cabinets. I'm going to hit apply and OK. And there we go. OK. Um, let's go back to the first floor. Now it didn't, it didn't give me that, this um, solid black. But I'll go ahead and just move it. And I know that it's there. Okay. Now it's not that big of an issue that it doesn't give me the solid black because remember that when we submit drawings, when we're done creating drawings, all of our drawings are always going to be in black and white anyways. So this is, oh, save the project. This is kind of this is really what it's going to look like um, in in the um, in the printouts. Okay, 
And we could, if we ever wanted to, we could actually go in and add a rectangle shape here that blocks out the lines um, as well. So there's that element as, there's that, you know, we could do that as well, okay? Um, okay, so then the other thing we can do, since we were just covered the edit type, let's go ahead and go back into base component. What if there's a cabinet that we like that is not the correct length that we want? So these cabinets all come in in standard widths. Um, typically, your standard widths are in increments of three inches, so starting from really 12 inches. So you could find a 12-inch cabinet. You could find a 15, an 18, 21, 23, well, 21, 24, 27, 30. Um, after 30, they pretty much jump to 36 and then to 42. And so these are the general sizes of cabinets, okay? They're much more, um, when, you, when you purchase, and this is just in general, when you purchase objects that are already kind of pre-built and predefined, it's a lot cheaper than the custom ones, right? So you could actually create your own custom cabinets if you want to, but you're gonna have to pay a lot more. So we try to use custom sized cabinets. Um, sorry, I take that back. We try to use the standard size cabinets when we're adding um, cabinets. But let's say we wanted to do a custom cabinet. Let's say I wanted one that is 32 inches wide. So we're gonna follow the same steps. If you remember when adding doors and windows, creating and customizing doors and windows, it's gonna be the same process. So I'm going to select a cabinet that I want. I'll hit edit type. And then we're going to duplicate it because remember we don't want to adjust the same settings and mess up our 30 inch cabinet. So I'll duplicate this. This one I'm going to go ahead and call 32 inch. I'll hit OK. And now it changes up there. But remember, this only changes the name. It's not going to actually make a change until we make that change down over here. So I'll go ahead and change the width to 32 inches. That's going to convert that to feet for me to feet 8. And now I'll just hit OK. And now I have a 32 inch base cabinet that I could go ahead and add. Just, there we go. Okay. Okay, so now I have a good amount of cabinets here. Let's go ahead and add a countertop. So we're gonna go back into components. And I'm not sure if I saw it on here. So let's see if it's already um, loaded in. So we have countertop, but this is a top L shape with the sinkhole. I think that's all we get. So, okay, so we're gonna go into load family. I'm gonna go back to casework and then go into countertops. So here we have countertop with sinkhole, with the actual sink, just the countertop plane, an island one, and so on and so on. And then you'll also notice that at the bottom we have the vanity ones. So if it says countertop, that is already um, set up for a kitchen um, cabinet so that it sits on top of a kitchen cabinet. Vanity ones are set up to sit on a vanity cabinet. Now there's no difference you know, if you accidentally click on vanity ca um, countertop and you add it to a kitchen, it's not going to mess anything up. It just means that you're going to have to go in and manually adjust the height for the countertop. So instead of, because this comes in at, um, I think, two feet, five and a half inches. So you just have to go in there and manually move that up so that it hits the kitchen countertop height. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on countertop with sinkhole. I'm not going to do this with sink because I want to show how to add a sink. Um, this way we don't use the generic one. So I'll do countertop with sinkhole. I'm going to hit open. And there we have it. Okay, there's our countertop. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned that 
um, I mentioned in the previous lecture that the backsplash is the double lines, right? And um, the front is a single line. So that's what I mean. If you look at my cursor, my cursor is set up um, at the top left corner of the backsplash. And remember the backsplash is butts up against the drywall. So up against our finished material. So that means I going to have to flip this over. So I'll hit the space bar until I get it to the um, facing the angle I want to. Then I'm going to come over here and place it right where my drywall is. Here we go. Oops. Just like that. Oops, sorry about that. Delete that. OK. So there's my countertop. We have the double lines on the back side. And then you'll notice that this countertop line is about an inch past my actual cabinet. And that's OK. That's what it should be. Remember that the, cab the countertop goes past the cabinet box by about an inch. But one of the things that you'll notice, you know what, I'm going to copy this over just so we can take a better, get a better look of it. I'm sorry. I'm going to copy this over. One of the things that you'll notice is that I get all sorts of these kind of triangles, these buttons that allow me to adjust things. So they kind of, it's kind of self-explanatory maybe. Um, these top ones, will allow us to move the countertop up at the top. This allows us to move this up the bottom side. And then we have these that are in the middle that allow us to adjust the length of the actual opening for the sink. Or if you want to keep it as is, keep the distance um, or the width as is, but you just want to move the entire hole, we could go right in at the center and click and drag, and it'll move the entire um, the entire opening into the countertop. Okay. We could also make these the front side wider with these over here as well. Okay. So with that, let me go ahead and delete this. Let's go ahead and click on our countertop. I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way over so that it's aligned to the edge here. And then I'm going to move. I want to keep the same width, the same opening. Um, I just need to move it over here to this side. So I'm going to grab it at the center. And then I'm going to move. And then you'll notice that it snaps right at the center of this box. It recognizes the box underneath. Okay, And there we go. Okay, now you'll notice that it also hid, right? We had the this base cabinet. This is that, that funky one that we had to adjust. Um, that didn't come in as solid, but now that we added the countertop, which is an actual solid material, it gives it to us. Um, it kind of hides the, the flooring because what we're looking at is the top of the countertop. That's how we add countertops. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it's just a matter of adding. It's just a matter about placing it and then moving the arrows to fit the area that you need to fit. Let's go into the section really quick. Just take a look, and everything looks good. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and add the actual sink. So we're going to go back to the architecture tab. I'm going to click on component. I'm not sure if the sink comes installed. So let's pull come down. We could add refrigerators, shower base, sink, kitchen, double. But see, this is a 42 inch by 21. And my opening here, I believe, is 36. Actually, let's measure it so we know. Oops. I was trying to add another component. Let's measure it just to make sure. I'll click there. Click there. Oh, so this is two feet three. So that's a 27 inch wide opening. Now, it doesn't matter because remember, we could click on this and adjust this. We could go up to 39 inches if we want to because that's how big the box is. 
actually we could kind of it would have to be smaller because the box has plywood underneath um and we don't want the sink running into the the wood itself so i'm going to go into architecture go into component and then i'm going to go into load family now sinks are not in the casework so let's go back to our um folders and then i'm going to go down to plumbing and then i'll click on architectural and then i want fixtures okay and then i'm going to want sinks and here's a single uh, a sink kitchen double we have the island we have a single and then we also have the vanities i'm going to go with a sink kitchen double i'll hit open oh so it already overwrites okay so in that case since we already have the sink in place but it's that 42 inch i was hoping it, it would give us options to install different sizes um but we're going to have to take this and then edit it so we'll go to edit type we're going to go duplicate and this one i'm going to leave it at 21 but let's make this 36 inches I'll hit OK, and then I need to change it to actually 36 inches, so which is three feet. So I'll just change that like that. I'll hit Apply and OK, and now I'll hit the spacebar to rotate it correctly. I'm going to place it right at the center. You also notice that it also snaps too. And there we go. Now the sink is sitting on top of the countertop. So if I click on the countertop, okay, you'll notice, and if I kind of move my cursor over, you notice where the hole is. And you'll notice that the hole of the countertop is not where the hole of the sink is being placed. Okay, so there's kind of overlapping in a weird way. That means I'm gonna have to kind of move this at least there definitely move this down and then move this up and I'm again I'm adjusting the height I'm sorry I'm adjusting the size of the um of the hole of the countertop okay and then that's it now the hole doesn't have to be exact because remember the sink is um is covering the hole so we just want to make sure that that the hole is big enough to fit the sink. Um, we don't want the cabinet, I'm sorry, we don't want the countertop kind of cutting through the actual sink itself. Um, so that's how we go about adding sinks. So you see it's starting to get really kind of simple and, and straightforward. I'm really quickly just gonna add a water closet I don't have a bathroom here. Let's go up to the second floor. I don't really have a bathroom on the second floor either, but we could use one of the rooms. Okay, so here's, let's say one of these is a bathroom. We'll go to component, load family. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go to water closets. Okay. So you'll notice that we have toilets, we have four toilets, two of them are commercial, two are domestic, which is residential, but they'll say 2D and 3D. Um, and what this is, is essentially, do you want a 2D, just a flat 2D image of a toilet, or do you want the actual three-dimensional one? The reason why we do this is, or the reason why Revit does this is because um, to help you kind of reduce the size of your files. So right now we're just doing a two-story residence. That's not going to be that big of a project um, compared to, let's say, a multi-housing complex or a, um, you know, 50-story hotel or I don't know, right? It's something big, which we can use Revit for. Um, something of that size, you're going to want to try to save as much files um, file space as you can. Imagine 
doing a 3D model for a 100 apartment or 100 unit apartment, that means that you're going to have to install 100 toilets, okay, at the very least. And so that's going to raise the file size quite a bit. Um, so that's a situation where you would just use a 2D instead of the 3D. Okay, but again, we're using a, you know, ours is just a two-story residence, so we can go ahead and just use the 3D. So I'll click there, I'll hit open. Oh, it turns out we already had it. So now that means I have to go looking for it. So, da, 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 da. nope, I'm at the bottom. So that means I'm going to have to go up. Oh, here we go. Toilet. So I'll click Toilet Domestic. And again, you'll notice that it's coming in at the center. So I like to just kind of place it where I need to. Over here, I'm purposely going to place it away. I'll use the Move tool. And the reason why I'm didn't place it right up against the wall is because it came in at the center. So my cursor was holding onto it at the center. And so if I moved it up against the wall, I'm still kind of eyeballing it. The better strategy is to just place it and then use the move tool so that you know that you're grabbing the corner or an edge of the toilet and then moving it in, in place. Okay. And then I'm going to select this, grab my temporary dimensions, which is already set to the center of the water closet. And I'm going to change this to, let's go 16 inches. So now I know that it is 16 inches away from the um, face of my drywall, okay, which is within range. Remember that the minimum, the minimum is, um, is 15 inches, okay? And then lastly, if we wanted to add, let's say, a tub, you just come inside here, and you'll see it's the same thing. Now with the tub, you'll notice that if I click here, I get this symbol that says I can't install it. A tub needs to be installed alongside of a wall. Um, so it's not until I move my cursor alongside of the wall that it actually pops up. Okay, so then once I, and remember the, um, the location of my cursor will determine whether it's on the left side of the wall or the right side or outside of the wall or inside of the wall. Okay, I could also hit the space bar and that flips it. Kind of can't see. Right, that flips it. So let's say I wanted to put it over here. I could flip the direction and place it right there. Okay, I could click on it just to make sure that the corners are lining up or that the, the faces of the toilet are lining up. But that's, um, oh, you see, it's not right there. So I'll use the move tool to grab it into place and put it where it needs to be. Okay, so that's it. That's how we kind of go about adding um, components into, into Revit.